Yadkin. On a day's ride. You gonna set on Yadkin? No, we're joining Daniel Boone's party. We're gonna locate the new valley he found over the mountain. Fine place, small I hear. You from Yadkin, friend? How many are going on Boone's party? Don't know exactly. But it'll be a pretty strong outfit. You ain't seen any Indians around, have you? No, maybe a hunting party or two. But Indians hereabouts are all friendly. It ain't nothing for you to worry about. That's what I keep telling Effie. Well, the sooner we get started, the sooner we'll get to Yatkin, I guess. Well, goodbye, friend. Safe journey. Thanks. Same to you. <laughs> is a very solemn occasion. Today, many of us will be setting out to make new homes in the unknown country across the mountains that they call Pain to He. I praise God that we go forth amidst a new atmosphere of peace and understanding with our Indian neighbors and under the prudent leadership of Daniel Boone. So, oh Lord, look down upon us, thy people. Bless and keep us in all our ways. Guide and guard us as thou didst the children of Israel and bring us safely to this new promised land. Amen. Amen. Well, I think I'd better hurry up and get some of my supper. Oh, Pompey. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Master um, Hollow. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Commissioner. Pompey, Sir John said that I could borrow you to help me get some of my stuff ready. Uh, uh, yes, sir, Master Hollow. Just as soon as I go and tell the master, sir. Thank you. Master, uh, Mr. Mollow wants to know, can I go and help him pack his things, sir? Uh, certainly, Pompey. I'll you take him out to Jerry home. Oh, Jerry, uh, run along with Pompey. Yes, come, Master Jerry. We got to go see the Indian. I've got to get my things together and change. I'll see you later. Good morning, Sir John. Good morning, Mr. Virginia. Good morning, Commissioner. You're all very fortunate to be able to go on this expedition. Splendid opportunities. You'll all become rich. That's what they told Father about this Yadkin. Splendid opportunities. You'll all become rich. I don't have to tell you there were no fortunes made here. Now, now, dear, please, please. This will be different. How do you know it'll be different? Nobody's even seen the place except Daniel Boone. And what is he, a dreamer? Always chasing the next horizon. Uh, nothing of the kind. He's a man with imagination and foresight. Oh, oh. Quite so, quite so. Maybe you're right. Well, excuse me, Father. I have a dozen things to do before we leave. Good day, Commissioner. A very highly strung, Commissioner. Footprint. Yeah. There's a white man with them. Yes, prisoner. No, no prisoner, Black Eagle. <laughs> if he were captive, he'd be bound and take short steps. This man takes long steps. This man's a leader. Only one white leader of Indian. Simon Gertie. What would he be doing down here 400 miles from his village? Maybe he hear about your party going across mountains. Hate white men. You party, many scalps, many horses. Mr. Grady, we've got to bring him in. They man horses here.
and find a home somewhere. <laughs> think we're going to leave soon, Virginia? I guess so, dear. It's going to be lots of fun. You think we'll see any Indians? I hope not. We have enough trouble without Indians, I'm afraid. You needn't be afraid, Virginia. Mr. Boone will take care of us. He told me he would. You like Mr. Boone, don't you, Jerry? Lots and lots. Don't you? Oh, I haven't seen very much of him. I like Mr. Boone right off. And, uh, and he likes you. Oh, I'm not interested whether he does or not. Did he really say he likes you? No. But I'm sure you'd say so if I asked him. Don't you dare. And don't you even let him know we talked about it. Can I be of any help, Miss Virginia? Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Marlowe. Thank you. Everything's attended to. Come, dear. Are you going with us, Mr. Marlowe? Yes, Jerry. You and I are going to be fellow adventurers. Between us, we'll have to take care of your sister, won't we? Yes, sir. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll pay my respects to your father. Virginia. I don't like him. Jerry, you mustn't say a thing like that. That's very rude. Mr. Marlowe's a nice gentleman. And you must be polite to him. I'll be polite. But I won't mean it. Sir John? Well, you look like a frontiersman, Marlowe. <laughs> so I must say that I thought an expedition of this kind was a bit out of your line. I expected you'd be returning to Richmond. As a matter of fact, that was my intention. But I have a feeling that this new country offers great possibilities. I think I we'd see. better put Jerry up on the feet, Father. He'd be out of the way there. All right, dear. Up you go, young man. If we don't start soon, we'll never make that first leg by sundown. We can't do anything till Boone gets here. For two years now, he's been planning this expedition. And now, when everybody's ready, he has to go off on one of his hunting trips. There must be some very good reason for his absence. Well, I suppose all we can do is to sit here and wait for him to choose to come in. Sit here? Supposing something's happened? Why don't some of you men go out and look for him? Uh, Birch! 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 He won't show up yet? I ain't seen him. Don't you think we'd better try and pick up his trail? Wouldn't do no harm. I'll get Finch and a few of the boys. Right. Take care of Gertie. Thought you were a Richmond, Boone. Where are you headed for? I'm on my way to Yadkin. that night.
Come back, you fools! It's only a trick! Don't move, Gertie. What's this, another joke? This is no joke. And don't try anything. You're covered from the brush. We're getting worried about you, Daniel. Stop to pick up a friend of yours. Moses in the cradle. It's Gertie. Well, well. Here's the great scalper. Time you had a haircut yourself, Gertie. Easy, Joe. Save it until we get the ad. I know all that. What was he doing? I wasn't doing nothing. Quiet! Well, Boone, what is the charge? It's a matter of common knowledge, Commissioner. That Gertie has murdered and scalped scores of settlers, men, women, and children. And is continually arousing the tribes against us. That's a lie. Many a time I kept the tribes from burning white settlements. Ain't you the little angel of mercy? What's the use of all the arguments? Hand him over to us. Well, you wouldn't be rough with us, would you, Commissioner? <laughs> Just a minute, friend. We're not going to lose anything by going slow. We'll see that justice is done. Good for you, Daniel. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? All right, then. That's fine. But the commissioner is in charge here, and we've got to respect his authority. Now then, my man, what have you to save yourself? I say he ain't got no right to drag me in this way. I was out on a peaceful hunting trip with a small party of braves. Anything you had against me was wiped out when the peace was signed. Unless you can bring proof of some new crime, Moon, I don't see how we can hold him. As he says, when the peace treaty was signed, a general amnesty was granted to all the tribes. That only applied to Redskins. Gertie is a white man. Who's a white man? I'm a chief of the Lion Dogs. I've been adopted into the tribe, all regular, with full ceremony. And if anything happens to me, it'll start the tribes on the warpath again. But there's a certain amount of truth in what he says, Boone. His death at this time might turn up serious trouble. It's far more trouble if he's allowed to live. No Indian on the frontier can equal the record of his massacres. No doubt everything you say is true, Boone. But we've given our word to the Indians, and we must respect it. Even to the extent of letting this Blackguard, go. I knew it was going to end like this. Are you going to let the Lord Jesus? Let's get a roll. Yeah, we'll have to roll. Can Lord talk stop Gertie when he's got a tomahawk in one hand and a scalping knife in the other? No! Would you let a rattlesnake get another chance? No! Would you give a wolf another chance? No! I say, don't give this scalping burden Gertie another chance! No! The law is the law, and we must respect it. You are the only man that can handle this crowd. 
and I depend on you to prevent any violence. same way when I brought him in. But unfortunately, as you have just heard, this man is protected by the peace treaty. In a few minutes, we'll be setting out on a 500-mile journey over mountains and through forests to a new Indian country, never before settled by white people. If we hang Gertie, the Indians will claim we have broken faith with them. And this will bring down on your head and your family the war hatchets of his redskin friend. I say Gertie's life isn't worth it. You think I'm right? Raise your hand. Get his horse, Black Eagle. You're free, Gertie. Get back to your tribe and don't ever show your face in a white settlement again. And if you take my advice, Boone, You'll never show your face outside a white settlement again. My friend, I'm afraid I won't be seeing you for some time. Each man to his duties, Marlowe. I congratulate you on your patriotic spirit in helping to open new, untitled lands for settlement. Yes, and don't forget that the most important thing about this enterprise is to see that those titles get into the proper hands. Exactly. And I can think of no better hands than yours and mine. Don't lose any time in sending in a fool. Don't worry. I'll bring it myself. Pretty hard day, Daniel. Don't you think we ought to make camp? I know it's been hard, but we haven't covered much ground. I want to get to the river before sundown.
Joe's here tonight. Get your wagons in camp formation. Check over the wagons, Joe. I don't want any more breakdowns tomorrow. All right, then. I go bring cattle. Yes, they got farther ahead than I thought they would. But uh, I'll send someone else. I want you here with me. Let me see. Marlo, I want you to ride ahead and bring back the herd. Tell the boys we're going to camp here tonight. But I'd, I'd have to swim that river. Those boys swam it. Curse to me, we're getting pretty fur ahead. Some of them darn wagons must have broke down again. Well, maybe we ought to wait for them to catch up. Yeah. Wait, nothing. Don't give orders for us not to make count until sundown, so we better keep moving. Listen, about time you were in bed, young fellow. We've got to get an early start in the morning. Gee, you let me ride your horse again tomorrow? I promise you the right to sleep. I will. Honest, I will. Up you come. Up. Good night. Oh, no, please, don't go. I'm serious, really, I am. I'm too tired to be serious. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Boone. Are you rounding up the missing members of your flock? No, I came to see if the captain was back. Where did you leave the model? I asked you a question. Did you carry out my order? No. Why not? You've plenty of boys around here to run your errands. I didn't join this expedition to play messenger. Well, oh, as long as you're with this expedition, you'll do as I say. Keep your hands off. Stop that. I see no reason for flying into a blind rage simply because Mr. Marlowe didn't jump to your orders. My orders are given for the common good. I'm responsible for the lives of all of us. I appreciate that. But I'm sure Mr. Marlowe didn't realize the matter was so important. I'm sorry I lost my temper. 
Now I can't even see nothing at a hundred yards low. Get it? That's right. I seen him fire the turkey at ten feet, and he missed it. Found a turkey with a knife at ten feet. You don't quit that yap you down with a good swift kick. Ah, that's what I've been trying to do for fifteen minutes. The road hard, Daniel. The herd was scattered last night. Redskin? Yes. What about the boys? Well, killed? Who done it? Wine those. Goody? Yes, we trailed them for a while, but they've gone north fast. A long start. Better take a half a dozen men, get out there, and uh, see if you can't round up that herd. Joe, take three boys, get out there as fast as you can, and bury the body. Right. What's the orders, Daniel? We go right on. Hello, I'll give you ten minutes to clear out. Clear out? But you can't do that to me, Boone. I'd die out here alone. You heard what I said. Virginia! Virginia! Boone's given me ten minutes to get out. He blames me for that killing. We are to blame. If you'd gone last night, this never would have happened. Yes, but I didn't think it was that important. I never dreamt they'd be killed. You know I didn't. Please, Virginia, you must help me. Talk to Boone. He won't listen to me. Oh, yes, he will. He'll do anything you ask, Will. Please, Virginia. I'll die if I'm left here alone. You must help me, please. Joe, get the cattle going. Don't let them get too far ahead. Mr. Boone. Yes? Miss Marlowe just told me you ordered him to leave. That's right. Well, where can he go? Back where he came from. You know that's impossible. He's not like you or the others who've been brought up in the forest. He'll never find his way back to Yagin alone. I'm giving him a better chance than he gave those boys last night. Oh, I know that was wrong. He didn't do it deliberately. Killing Stephen won't bring back those poor boys. We've had enough death, please. 
I promise you'll have no more trouble. Please let him stay. All right. Tell him he can stay. White score one Marlow. You one white score. Why no shoot Marlow? Take score. That's not the white man's way, Blackie. White way no good. White man talk here. Pretty soon talk here. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Thank thee that thou hast brought us safely across these mountains and hast spread before us this beautiful valley for our home.
Jack and Gad can bend. Powder, shot, flour, rope, axle grease. Virginia. Yes? I couldn't go without making one final effort. It's no use. Virginia, you're condemning yourself to a life of drudgery. I'm going back to great wealth. Come with me. As my wife, you can have anything in the world you want. I have everything I want right here, thank you. Why don't you be honest about yourself? Honest? Yes. You're in love with Boo. I think you'd better go. Good luck, Ben. You ought to make Yadkin in about 30 days. Tell everybody what we've got here and bring back with you as many families as you can. Right. Thank <laughs> God, I'll take good care of it, Ben, and be sure it gets delivered. Don't forget that jug of whiskey, Ben. And don't drink it before you get back, sir. I think it'll be all right. Let me help you. Now that the last log is made and the settlement completed, what shall we call it? What's the matter with New Yadkin? That's where we all come from. We're on the Kentucky River. Why not call it Kentucky City? That's an Indian name. And I don't name nothing after no redskin. What do you think, Sir John? Well, uh, oh, uh, Pompey, uh, we're trying to find a name for the settlement. What would you suggest? Well, sir, it appears to me it'd be mighty nice to name it after Mr. Boone, sir. Pompey, you hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the future of Boonesboro. Oh, I suppose we'd better get it over with before you burst. And do you remember what you're going to say? Yes, sir. I've been saying it over and over. Oh, uh, uh, Pompey, uh, go about quietly and tell everyone to assemble over here. Uh, yes, sir, Sir John. Right away, sir. Come on. I really should go back to the tables and help. Oh, I think you've done enough. Besides, remember your ankle. There really isn't anything wrong with it. It's mighty kind of you, Miss Randolph, if you could remain lame a little longer. I'll try, Miss Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we're both laughing at the same thing. Mr. Boone, Miss Randolph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's silly to be so formal, isn't it? Let's stop it. All right, Daniel. Or do you prefer Dan? I like it any way you say it, Virginia. Mr. Boone, sir. Yes, Pompey. Uh, the gentleman would like to see you, sir. All right, I'll be right over. Yes, sir. I'm entitled to any special credit. What we've done, we've done together. In five short months, we built our new home, surveyed our lands and found them rich. We've cleared enough acreage for the spring planting. And I thank God the Indians have left us in peace. And I look forward with you, my friends, to many years of happiness and to a bountiful prosperity for us all. Sorry, I forgot. 
very well, Jerry. Father had to help me, but I helped you, didn't I? <laughs> think your ankle could stand the strain of another dance? I think so, Daniel. they are, let's give them welcome. Welcome to Boonesboro, friend. Where are you from? Richmond. Hear ye, hear ye. From the governor of Virginia, Reading, by these presents be it known that the territory west of the Cumberland Mountains, known herefore as the Valley of Cane to Key, is hereby incorporated into the Commonwealth of Virginia. Wherefore, be it known to all those who lay claim to lands in the aforesaid territory, that unless on or before the 15th day of October of this year of our Lord, 1775, they register their claims to such lands with the proper authorities in Richmond, together with the prescribed fees and purchase rights, their claims to title in such lands as they now presume to hold shall be declared null and void. What's all this law? Do you realize what this means? We own this land. You've got to file proper claims. Well, according to that table, we haven't got time to file them. We hold squatters' rights. That's all we've been title enough. It's not considered legal in Richmond. If you resist, they'll send the militia and drive you off. Friend, please, please. We won't gain anything by armed resistance. I'll talk to the governor. If we have to do all this legal business, I'm sure he'll give us reasonable time to do it. Friend, you're welcome to stay and refresh yourself. We'll be returning to Virginia tomorrow. If you care to come with us... No, I'm leaving right away. Virginia. Wouldn't it do just as well if you wrote a letter to the governor explaining everything? These men are leaving tomorrow. They could take it. Save you that long trip. I'm afraid not, Virginia. I'm sure everything will straighten out all right, but I don't want to leave anything to chance. You will be careful. Is there anyone you care to send a message to? In Richmond? No. Bye, Virginia. Your usual good luck seems to be deserting you, my lad. <laughs> we'll be getting our own back for once, Marlowe. Oh, my luck will change. Come in. What is it, Peter? It's that Mr. Boone again, sir. You say that I'm busy. I'll tell him to come back some other time. I told him that, sir, but he's very insistent. He's been trying to see you for three days, and he says he won't go until he has. That was becoming really a nuisance. Now, why don't you see him and get it over with? After all, you you are the Attorney General, you know. <laughs> oh, I suppose so. But I hate to stop the game right now. Clean, clean up this stuff. Yes, sir. Now, gentlemen, 
Let us assume a judicial attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney General will see you. Yes, Mr. Boone? Sir, the governor has referred me to you. He said your office takes care of all land disputes. Quite correct. Well, sir, I've come to Richmond to straighten out the matter of title to our lands on the Cane Tukey River. Yes. I discussed that matter with the governor. But I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. You were notified to file your claim in the proper manner, which you failed to do. But you didn't give us time for that. Besides, we've never had to file title before. Squatters' rights have never been questioned. I found that balance. Sir. Spent two years organizing an expedition to settle it. We cleared it, planted it, and built our home. If that isn't title, then what is? Sorry, Mr. Boone, but we cannot make an exception in your case. When new land is taken into the state, it falls immediately under its law. Matter of fact, the claim on this land already has been filed. It cannot be set aside. It isn't hard to guess who filed that claim. I came here honestly expecting that this office would protect us in our just claims to these lands. Instead, I find myself among the gang of thieves who have stolen them. That'll do, sir. One more word and I'll put you under arrest. You're enjoying yourself, aren't you, Marlowe? Immensely. I haven't forgotten, Mr. Boone. But you once threatened to turn me out into the wilderness. Very soon now, I shall have the very great pleasure of driving you and your rabble off my property. Why, brother, sad. Long time now. Can't help it, Black Eagle. How can I face those people? How can I tell them their lands and their homes have been stolen? No, let's take. Fight! That's what I want to avoid. No. I guess we'll have to go somewhere else and start all over. You make fire. I could get it. I say to you, my brothers of the Cherokees, Wyandots, Tawas, the Pawnees, that now is the time to strike. Already the whites have advanced over the mountains and have built a strong stockaded village in the heart of your hunting ground, the King Juki. Now it is but one small village. Tomorrow it'll be two, then three, then four, 
and you'll be driven farther and farther west. Pay us a little visit. And we were just getting ready to call on you. Glad I saved you the trip. Oh, we don't mind the trip. We're going anyway. I got a little score to settle with your Yadkin car. You're home, Burragurdy. It's too well fortified. There are too many good rifles there. Look around, Joe. This is only part of our force. Besides, your friends in Boonsboro won't be expecting us. That's why we left them alone so long. So they'd get careless. Smart, eh? I wish I had let them hang you in Yadkin. You'll wish more than that before I get through with you. Time up! Get the fire!
Cindy, it's time the alarm. Everybody, quickly, quickly. Grady has roused the tribes against us. There are five tribes of Indians marching to attack us. I want all the lead turned in and shot. Get the cattle in. See that the water tanks are filled. Indians, Indians! Black Eagle, come on, let him in. What are we going to do, Boone? We can't hold out any longer. 
got to hold out. Well, how are we going to do it then? Our powder and shot's all gone. We ain't got enough water left, even for the wounded. We can't hold them off if they come at us again. And this time, they'll bring their fire bundles right up to the stockade. Then we'll be roasted alive. Why don't we make terms with them? You can't make terms with Grady. He's sworn to wipe out every one of us. Keep up your courage. Rain, we may have a chance. I won't count on the rain now. It's been like this for 24 hours. They're coming back. They're bringing fire bundles.
jury. Is he hurt, Mustafa? Dead, Poppy. Hiya, darling. Not a bit. Are you sure you want to come with me to the new western country? I'll go anywhere with you, darling. We must find new homes for these people. 